This episode of CU Live is brought to you with support from Stoff's Coffee Roasters. Since 1988, Stoff's has been offering specialty coffee hand roasted right here in Central Ohio. Stoff's is also a proponent of meaningful community conversations, whether online or in person. Visit their website at stoffs.com for the latest information on their locations or to order online and enjoy a cup of Stoff's while you watch this episode. Hello and welcome to See You Live. I'm Susan Post, Associate Editor of Columbus Underground. Today I have with me Lisa McLiman, who is a visual artist, graphic designer, and social justice advocate. Lisa, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about the power of civics and political art. Um, so late last year, you were interviewed for a really powerful article put together by CU reporter Tajan Mormon called The Politics of Protest Art. Um, and we'll certainly link to that for anyone that hasn't had a chance to read that yet, so you can check it out. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about that experience and, you know, some of the things that you said in that article. Um, you know, so really just to kind of set up the situation is downtown in Short North saw continued Black Lives Matter and social justice protests last summer. Um, a lot of businesses were boarding up their properties. Um, you know, were you kind of surprised at what an important part of the conversation the subsequent murals and art became? And, you know, kind of explain why or why not. In some ways I was surprised, but ultimately I wasn't because Columbus is such a passionate arts town. Mm -hmm. um, artists step up when yeah. there are things that are happening and we record the history and help people think through in different ways. Um, so in that sense, I was really proud to take part in what the community was trying to mm -hmm. shift for change. Um, being, being a black person, I had a problem, I'm sorry, I'm like feeling, I'm going back in time Absolutely. remembering yeah. everything, but um, I was really upset probably about a month in because it was just like this mural free for all, like murals became so important, everybody was mm -hmm. talking about like, are they gonna save them, what's gonna happen? Yeah. And meanwhile, there were many black people dying. So mm -hmm. for me, it just felt like a deflection of what was more important, which are lives. Absolutely. Um, but I'm also aware enough that art is powerful, like it saved my life, so it, it, mm -hmm. it, there is an important conversation happening that we don't want to forget. So right. Well, and that kind of plays right into my next question is, you know, what kind of role can art play in these really important, you know, political and social movements like this? Uh, well, for me, I see it um, playing a big role in uh, helping people understand what's happening mm -hmm. without talking directly to them. Yeah. Like they, they can interpret what, what an artist makes mm -hmm. and take it away and think it through. And hopefully that changes how they think, changes their perception, but also changes the conversation they choose, yeah. choose to have around something. Well, I know personally our offices are downtown and one day we just kind of went out and walked around and mm. looked at everything and it was just incredibly powerful to, to see everything and see the different interpretations and it, it really meant a lot. It was yeah. really neat. Yeah. Um, you know, so I want to go to something you said in this article. Um, you said, ask the question, am I here because I'm a black person and you want to feel good about paying someone to put art in this space to say you're connected to this? Or are you really invested in connecting and making a change? And you know, throughout the article, you really kind of reiterated that action has to go beyond just this mural. Yes. Um, you know, so what do you think some of those next steps are that a business should be taking to show that they are invested in, you know, kind of the bigger picture and the bigger movement here? I think the biggest thing a year out is hire more black people, hire more mm -hmm. people of color, hire more LGBTQ people in leadership positions. Absolutely. Um, it's not renaming streets and statue, taking mm -hmm. down statues. That is part of it. Um, that is the first easy part of it. But the hard part is where do you go from here? Where do you choose to go? Mm -hmm. um, how willing are you to push for the conversations among your work teams? And I think it's the hardest um, in mid-level and, and um, large corporate agencies. But that is key on really helping make a change happen. Absolutely. Um, fighting systemic racism, you know, mm -hmm. like that's that's where it has to start happening. Yeah, and I mean, and there's study after study out there about how, you know, a more diverse workforce is a better workforce and you've got new ideas and new perspectives and... Yes, and I'll have to add women, you know, mm -hmm. get more women in leadership too. Um, yeah. Great. You know, so kind of thinking from an artist level, how do you feel that the events and experiences last summer, and I mean, even really the last year with the pandemic, have changed your work and kind of, you know, your approach to art? 
Uh, I now call myself a muralist, which is uh -huh. exciting. I was not doing murals before the protest. Because those were uh, some of your first protest. kind of large scale murals, right? Yeah. Yes. All of last year, all, every mural I did was still a first in some way. Like mm -hmm. I did a painterly one. I did one by myself, the very first one. I got to work with my Blockport family. Uh -huh. um, Adam Brulette is such a great guide uh, and a nurturer of mm -hmm. uh, creativity and helping people, empowering people to do more for themselves yeah. and for the community. Uh, so it was really exciting to stand with with um, my friends slash family mm -hmm. to make it make a point, you know, make a change. We did the Ohio Theater mural right. that was the first downtown, and I'm proud to have that, you know, as part of my memory. Um, working with bridging, being a black person and an LGBTQ person, bridging with white people who are allies to who mm -hmm. I am fundamentally made a big statement and it yeah. felt really good to be across from the state house and cheering the protesters on and having the mm -hmm. protesters see that we're there to support them. Yeah. Uh, I just, it was probably the best place to put myself mm -hmm. in that time of strife. Sounds very pow powerful. It, it was a very, very powerful experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, and this is obviously, there could be so much more to this discussion. No, but, I could go on. You know, really appreciate you shedding some light on this topic and uh, sharing more about your experience. Thank you. So thank you so much. Thank you.